Hey everyone and welcome to Screams After Midnight TV edition. <laughs> I'm Peter, that is Tim. And we talk about horror movies usually, but of course today we're talking about a TV show. It's been a long time, we did all the Tales from the Crypt, but we're finally back <laughs> because there is a new Juon TV show, uh, a Netflix original no less. It's Juon Origins. This is going to be mm-hmm. season one, episode one. And uh, we'll, it's just as an episode one, I think we'll start spoiler free and just give our sort of impression of it. Uh, before we go into the actual plot details uh so but yeah so this is uh set in 1988 it is apparently a prequel to the juan movies uh although admittedly to be honest like these films are so kind of like disconnected and like you know and uh, like how much is this going to link up with the movies i don't know and if it does Mm -hmm. does it really matter that much Uh, i mean what we're really here for is good scares and creepy moments yeah i mean (laughs) It, it's not like they're all like super different like it's it's basically just like hey there's a creepy house where creepy stuff happens and mm-hmm. people go there and then stuff happens to them like yes. <laughs> and it started because something really bad happened in the house and that's basically mm-hmm. that's basically it now we actually if you're interested in our, our thoughts on the movies we've not reviewed all the john movies but we've reviewed all the movies that are the grudge in some way so we did john the grudge mm-hmm. one and two uh, we did the grudge one two three two and three from the u.s and then we did the new one and we had sadiko <laughs> versus kaiko but there's actually a mm-hmm. bunch of john films we haven't done we haven't done john the curse one or two and we haven't done there was a couple of, like it was like john the, final curse or something like that and there was um i think there was some like maybe like red like jew on red jew on blue oh, i haven't heard of those ones but yeah, yeah. Like... <laughs> i think it's like the it's kind of like the japanese children of the corn there's a lot more movies <laughs> than you realize <laughs> like once you hear like oh jesus like 14 of these all right i mean same thing for uh like the ring like we did like the main ring movies but then i think there's like a whole other like you know uh like solo sadako series and stuff that you don't really realize yeah which i'm sure we'll get to someday but uh, that's just to give us a background <laughs> for what we've what we've discussed before, and I think from what we've seen, have you seen any of these other ones that we've talked about? Um, no, I, I, I well, I, I think maybe I might have seen one or two, but honestly, I really don't have any memory. Um, yeah, because uh, I, I, yeah, I think I watched one that maybe might have been like a, I don't know, kind of like a, a made for TV movie or, or something. Mm um that might have been streaming somewhere back in the day and i think i've at least seen clips of some other ones because i know there's like one kind of funny clip where there's like a grudge ghost with a basketball it's like this old lady <laughs> like holding a basketball is kind of funny uh but we, yeah i don't i'm not like a i don't have too much expertise in it we, ha- we have to find this basketball movie right now yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah so this is uh but, uh, for the for the record though i think um i mean people can go back and watch all the uh, reviews and stuff but the you know um the original uh you know japanese grudge movie is like one of my favorites of all time mm. like i still really really love that movie no i like the, I like the original a lot uh the sequels leave a lot to be desired but yeah uh, the original uh i quite like and the, the first american one's not too bad either to be honest uh yeah it's it, as far as remakes go it, it's fine like yeah. yeah i definitely prefer yeah the japanese but you know it's not horrible yeah, uh, the new the new remake though, the one that came out this year though, is garbage <laughs> uh, and avoid it at all costs. Uh, so yeah, this is six episodes this season, uh, and they're all just under thirty minutes. They're all about 27, 28 minutes long. So it's not like a huge time commitment per episode. Uh, we're going to be covering this. Uh, well, we'll decide by the end of this review if we're watching the rest of it. I mean, obviously this was always going to be let's watch the first one, talk about it, and see if we want to come mm-hmm. back for more. Uh, so it's essentially a three-hour epic grudge movie. Essentially, uh, when you really think about it that's um that that was one of the one of my first thoughts was yeah why isn't this just a movie because it doesn't feel like um like I, i'm yeah i'm not gonna say that it's necessarily bad or anything but it doesn't feel like a satisfying episode of like television to watch if you know you know what i mean like yeah it, I- like it, it just feels like the opening 30 minutes of a movie because yeah, I was kind of half expecting this to be more of an anthology where, because you know how like, the original mm-hmm. movies are all sort of like broken down into sections anyway, where it's like just one person's encounter and it'll maybe last twenty minutes and then it'll move to the next person mm-hmm. and there'll be like a tangential sort of connection between them, but for the most part, it was these mm-hmm. vignettes that were kind of split up, and I was kind of expecting this mm-hmm. to be here's a twenty five minute story of one person's like encounter with the ghost slash house and you know yeah. how, what their story is, 
And this isn't that at all. This this is serialized. Uh, there's, there's some characters that are set up in like one scene in this that we've not even seen any more of yet. Uh, mm -hmm. It's clearly set up some recurring characters and stuff that's going to be paying off. Um, which I kind of respect in one way, but I, I kind of agree that in terms of like how it's split up, I got to the end of the episode and I kind of felt like, oh, this was, that, that was, I mean, there's a bit of a cliffhanger, but it didn't necessarily mm -hmm. feel like there was a beginning, middle and end of a story. It felt like, no, yeah. here's just the, the first half hour of a three hour story that's been cut up. I mean, and maybe that's it. Maybe they, they wrote a script and went, oh shit, this is three hours long. That's too long <laughs> for a grudge movie. What if we split mm -hmm. it up into 30 minute chunks and call it a Netflix show? Uh, we can do yeah. that maybe. Uh, but that, that's something that a lot of streaming shows are guilty of though, because they expect people to binge sure. it. So they don't create episodes in the same way that, you know, traditional TV does. Yeah. Uh, and, and I'll, and I'll be honest, like I did, we did watch like some of the next episode because it was like, we were watching this late at night and then, yeah, it just like automatically starts up. And then, <laughs> yeah. So it's like, uh, oh yeah, might, might as well. But like, um, yeah, it, it's uh, it, it's it's a little strange. I, I mean, again, yeah, maybe that's how most people are supposed to watch it. So, um, and maybe once you watch like the whole thing, uh, in yeah, you, you get more ideas of what's being set up in the characters. I don't know, it might work a little bit more if you go back or something. But, um, yeah, I I don't I don't know. It's it's kind of a weird one to get a strong handle on. Uh, I think right for right now. Yeah, I mean, the the, the the first episode mainly introduces to this uh, young actress who is on a paranormal... Well, I don't know if the show is a paranormal sh uh, like investigative show, but it she's on like a chat seems show like it. with yeah. a paranormal investigator who's one of her other main characters, and she's been hearing footsteps, and he asked her to record them, mm -hmm. and that's kind of one of her plot threads, and it kind of also her boyfriend, who it kind of turns out is more related to what's going on. And then we also introduce to her, our other main character, who's a teenage girl who's transferred schools, and we get a little bit of her backstory and what's happening to her at the new school. Uh, and there's also like one random scene of like a really asshole, what well, seems like an an abusive father, mm -hmm. uh, in a in a scene. But there's like a news report that maybe suggests he's connected to something else. So, uh, mm -hmm. I, I, my my first thought actually was I was I was uh, sort of wondering if like all these storylines that we were seeing were actually playing out at the same time. I was wondering if there was going to be like mm -hmm. a, maybe a reveal, and I don't know this. This is just me speculating then maybe later mm -hmm. on we're going to find out that some of these stories actually take place a fair bit in advance of some of the other ones. Uh, mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah. So, I mean, that's the, that's the general yeah. premise. Uh, I guess I'll just ask it. I mean, as much as you've said that it's mm -hmm. kind of weird how it feels like the first half hour <laughs> of a movie, I mean, did you like it? Mm -hmm. did, were you into it? Uh, I would say so, yeah. Um, I, I guess the, the biggest thing for me is I want to know uh, what's going on. <laughs> like you know uh because it, it's like it, it's hard to say right now if it's necessarily good or bad but i am intrigued to see who are these characters where's this going uh and nothing creepy really happens in this episode there's like one kind of like quick jump scare um there's, yeah there's, there's one sort of creepy moment and one sort of jump scare uh, which I guess it makes sense if this is the first half hour of like essentially a movie. It makes sense that the first half hour doesn't have as much in it uh, in terms of that. Yeah, I have I have heard though from reactions online uh, that it's gorier than you're probably expecting it to be, okay. and that there's one episode that I saw quote unquote goes full Evil Dead. So oh, wow. <laughs> I mean that is certainly intriguing and definitely yeah. different for Grudge uh, or Juon uh, than I expect from it. So hey, I'm yeah, I mean I'm I'm here for it. Like it's uh. Yeah, it, it it's uh, you know, sound like a broken record, but yeah, it's just really kind of hard to tell uh right now. But I am definitely, I I mean, obviously, I'm you know gonna watch like the whole thing, uh, and I am, you know, excited, interested to see where it goes. Um, but yeah, it's uh, I I guess right now my impressions are kind of like a, a little hampered. Uh, I mean, I, I guess I'd say it's good if it is keeping me interested and in wanting to continue, at least. Well, 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 what I'll say about it is one of the things you mentioned there is that you're interested to see where these characters go. And I think that, with the exception of maybe the first movie, I don't know mm -hmm. if I would say that about characters in the movies. I feel like the That's fact true. that you're yeah. curious about where these characters are going means that at the very least they've done something that the movies haven't really done that much of, and that is give us characters that you're like, oh, I want, I want to see where this paranormal investigator story goes. Like, how does he, yeah, you know, get involved true. in the house, and how does he do this and that, and like that's something. That, that's something that I would say yeah. it has over some of the movies, or most of the movies even. So mm -hmm. uh, that that is a start, and yeah, yeah. 
So, I mean, obviously what we're going to talk about in spoilers is probably just kind of who these characters are and uh, a bit what the, what this episode introduces, but I, I think it's fair. I mean, I want to watch more of it as well, so I think it's fair to say we're going to watch more and talk about it, yeah. so... Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, so you know, I mean, uh, that's as positive as I suppose as, as we can be. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, it'll be quick discussions because it's only half our episodes, but... Uh, and, yeah, I'm assuming, like, once we get more into the kind of meaty elements of it, um, that, yeah, there'll probably be a little bit more to discuss. Yeah. Uh, so, I guess I'll get the spoiler warning. So, uh, mm -hmm. Geon Origins, episode one, full spoilers from this point on. Uh, obviously, our future reviews will be spoilers for each of those episodes as we go through them, but... Mm -hmm. uh, so, it's very clear. I think the first thing that really stuck out to me is that there's a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of implications of this. Well, I mean, not even just implications, mm -hmm. but there's a, there's a lot of... Uh, I think the theme of sexual violence is definitely going to be playing a, a, a role throughout this. Yeah. Uh, it mm -hmm. kind of pops up... Uh, well, it's really just in the one plot, but it pops up in sort of two instances uh, in the mm -hmm. sense that the teenage girl who's transferred to schools, she's got kind of an interesting introduction where it's like a meeting with her mother and the, the principal of the school, mm -hmm. and he's kind of saying, oh, welcome to the school. You know, you're transferring midterm. It's kind of awkward, but, and you've, not, you've still got your old uniform. You know, your new uniform's not yet ready yet, so you can wear that. So she, she, so she visually sticks out amongst all the girls because they're all wearing kind of the... Uh, I mean, it's a Japanese schoolgirl uniform, but, uh, you know, I'd compare it to more of a like a sailor's like the one that looks more like a sailor's outfit <laughs> yeah. just, sure. just, uh, as opposed to what she's wearing what she's wearing versus the other girls which is more of a traditional like blazer that i would expect to see in, like a uk school but mm -hmm. uh so she she visually sticks out so she feels out of place immediately but two girls try to befriend her uh, anyway and they invite her to like go check out this this crazy cat house because all the cats go to this abandoned <laughs> house and of course i'm like first of all you kids are weird secondly that house is the is the cursed house what are you doing don't be don't be nuts uh, yeah but you wouldn't you tell me you wouldn't go to a house that had a bunch of cats in it <laughs> stray cats that may have diseases i don't know <laughs> uh but uh, that said the first cat they find looks suspiciously like wesker <laughs> my my, uh, my black cat so I don't I think know. he's doing some uh, acting work on the side. Uh, I think it might be. I, I've yet to see the receipts of this, though. I, I want <laughs> he can start paying rent and a lot of shit. Uh, <laughs> but you know, so but her, her introduction is kind of weird because her mother kind of breaks down in front of the teacher, and it kind of felt mm. like odd and off kilter, and it kind of it made sense later because when she goes home after her first day at school, mm. her mother is very cold with her at first, and then uh, brings up uh, two key things. One, the, it seems like she had to seduce a teacher at her last school mm -hmm. to get her out of trouble mm -hmm. in some way. Uh, and she's because she says, Oh, that teacher will make a pass at you. And at first, I thought like the mother wanted the teacher to make a pass at her because it was like how they were going to like scam him out of money or something like that. It felt like there was going to be mm -hmm. some sort of scheme. But then she got mad at her and said, You seduce your father, you little slut, and like sort of stormed out yeah. of the room. So, very healthy mother daughter relationship here, if I ever <laughs> saw it. I, I mean, yeah. <laughs> what, what do you make of this? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I was definitely surprised by this, uh, for sure. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Again, it's like, uh, I, I guess we'll kind of see how this, uh, you know, figures into things later. Um, but I mean, it's definitely gross. It definitely made me not like the mom for sure. I feel very bad for the girl. It, it it definitely feels like she, the, the teenage girl that is is is, is a victim uh, in multiple ways. So that's just kind of the first yeah. part of the episode that kind of introduces this idea, uh, the, the the sexual kind of the violence and abuse, and then the ending of course like takes it. And I mean, this this poor girl, like, presumably if, if she, because because what I'm reading from this is that the father assaulted his daughter. And then the mother it sounds like, yeah. has a warped mind and blames it on her and says, mm -hmm. "You seduced your father. You, you know, you took your father away from me." It's something that I've, you know, you've, you've heard stories of this deluded yeah. way of thinking. And then at the end of the episode, the the, the the girls take her to this this house, but along the way they they sort of meet up with this other uh, this other uh, teenager, this boy, who mm -hmm. goes with them. They go into the house, they kind of you know creeping around, they interact with this cat, and then as soon as they have her in the middle of the house. The girl says surprise and then grab her as if to pin her down Ugh. as the guy's taking off his jacket. And that's where we end the episode. You know, we, we just cut away and it's this kind of yeah. like cliff iron. It's like, 
Yeah, so this is again ultra dark. It's this, uh, you, mm-hmm. you know, presumably it's setting up a sexual assault here, but it's it's doing it with like two like allies helping him. Uh, this yeah. So which, yeah, it's. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was going to say I, this is where I was thinking that maybe this is going to actually be set before the, the other stuff, and maybe this is the start of the curse in this show, as opposed to you know the traditional murder from the Grudge movies. Uh, I mean, yeah, it, it certainly could be because yeah, it is like a, a horrific uh incident. And, um, yeah, it's like you said, it's like, yeah, very like gleefully dark. Like, um, you know, it's one thing to have, uh, you know, like doing like something like that. That's so messed up. But then, yeah, to have these two people that are like helping him and yeah, they're like very like happy about it. Like as this is going on, they're kind of like, yeah, laughing about it. And like the guy's like saying, like, oh, oh, come on. Don't you like me? Come on. You know, like it's like, <laughs> like super messed up um it's and... like the ultimate form of bullying that you get from like the way i sure. t- read these girls is that they they want to bully this new weirdo kid and yeah for for them that that is like they're willing to go this extreme it's kind of like imagine if like in carrie instead of just dunking oh no admittedly dunking the blood on her actually you know does not end well for them right you know if you've right. seen carrie <laughs> but imagine if instead of that they, they, they straight up like have have a guy like you know, raper essentially. Yeah. Like that, that's that's essentially what's happening here. At least that's what's implied yeah. at the end. Like maybe they'll swear of his next episode, but that's certainly what it seemed to be doing at the end of the episode. Sure. Um. Yeah, I don't. Know. It, it, it's very dark. Uh, it is. Um. I mean, I guess it's kind of messed up to say, but it is like, uh, like a, a cliffhanger that does. You know, like well, I can understand maybe some people. Yeah, wanting to drop out after that if that's like too triggering but yeah um it, it does kind of make you interested to see what's gonna happen next <laughs> you know uh hopefully <laughs> something not as dark but you know i don't think you're gonna get anything happy in this show i think it's just gonna get dark and dark and darker <laughs> although at the very least though these people should get their comeuppance uh hopefully it's, yeah. it's a horror movie that is the one good thing about a horror movies when someone bat- does something ex- evil or bad mm-hmm. typically speaking the ghost or the slasher villain or whoever will make sure they meet a grisly yeah. end. Is the one, yeah, one usually, thing you can latch on to. Yeah, usually, yeah, you have to sit through like some dark stuff, but usually there's uh, some uh, a cathartic ending where yeah they mm. they get what's coming to them. Uh, especially when it's something like yeah this horrific, like you know, <laughs> it's not just like beating someone up or something. It's a uh, horrible, horrible crime, and then. Uh, yeah, and it really makes you feel bad for, like, this girl that, you know, like, they already had that one scene with the mother setting up that, um, as she might have had, like, <laughs> you know, something else like this happen to her In fact, before. actually, like, Jesus. <laughs> one of the little moments that I really liked and is really kind of haunting given where it goes <laughs> is, uh, when the guy first appears and she sort of realizes that this guy's coming along with them, she kind of stands back a little bit and even questions, is he coming mm. with us? And, That's a good point, yeah. And it's like she's scared to be even with a guy, like, alone. And the, she, like, she she went with these two girls because she's trying to make friends. She's trying to, like, get involved with people mm-hmm. at her new school. She wants to not be, like, this loner. Uh, and But the, the, the weird idea of a boy being there, even with, like, two other girls there, which, I mean, turned out to not even matter because these two other girls <laughs> are clearly, you know, evil little shits. But mm-hmm. it, 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 it just... It, the fact that she was nervous about even being alone with a guy who... At this point, you don't, you know, you, you you shouldn't necessarily have to assume that there's anything threatening here, but yeah, she immediately felt that way, and unfortunately, she ended up being justified in that feeling. Uh, mm. So, you know, super dark. There is actually one other scene of like uh, abuse of like a character who we don't really see any more oh, of. Yeah, yeah. There's just mm. one scene in a car where there's this, uh, uh, you know, at least it looks like a father and a daughter, and the the the, the father's listening to like tapes of the 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 paranormal activity show, like on the on the, the on the radio. Mm. Uh, and the daughter turns it off and he gets mad at her and he starts hitting her like it, it, mm-hmm. it, you know, he starts hitting her and it cuts to the outside and the car's just rocking from him hitting her uh, Jesus. And yeah. it, it, it comes across as like just super <coughs> super dark and violent there is like a news report though afterwards where I think it says something about missing girls so I don't know if it's implying that he actually kidnapped a girl and this was like his, his victim mm-hmm. I need more <laughs> I need to see more of this to, to assess this but yeah. <clears throat> yeah and uh the the new stuff is interesting because uh, i don't know if it's the a- exact true story or if it's um maybe 
trying to kind of like uh I, I don't know what what you would say like uh, I don't want to say like homage because <laughs> yeah that makes it sound like a, a good thing but um you know that there is a really horrific story about uh these like young um like boys in Japan who like kidnap this girl and basically like torture her uh for like I think like a maybe a month maybe a couple of months or something yeah i i read the stories that maybe <laughs> last year it's pretty horrific oh, yeah. it's, it's like one of the most horrific like, crimes i've ever read about yeah it's yeah absolutely horrible i, I don't know it kind of it instantly made me think about that and I, I don't know if it's um if they're referencing that real life thing or uh you know doing like a maybe kind of a version of it but there, there is a narration at the start of the episode that says juon was based on a true story uh oh, yeah. admittedly I, i'm assuming very vaguely but I assume there must have been some kind of uh, paranormal event or something that the the concept of Juon is based on. Because uh, yeah. when I, I looked up on Wikipedia, this is where I was like checking like how many different Juon movies have been. Uh, the very <laughs> first piece of media, even before the first Juon, the curse was like a series of shorts uh, from from much further you know back in time, which I oh, assume wow. I assume came from you know just after when everything kind of started. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, no, it's it's interesting to kind of see what they're doing with this and uh, obviously the yeah. main plot that we've not really talked about as much is the investigator who's actually who we open with uh mm -hmm. he's he's helping this this girl this young woman this actress on on this uh, tv show and he asks her to record these sounds of noises and we get like on top of the footsteps we get this sort of weird kind of like almost breathing or talking noise mm -hmm. and he's suspecting like you know you moved out of your apartment to go live with your boyfriend he goes to see the boyfriend and it turns out the boyfriend wanted to propose to her and and do you know and his plans to do so went to visit the you know the cursed house uh <laughs> because it was cheap <laughs> and uh ever since then he's been seeing things and hearing things mm -hmm. and the first creepy thing in the episode is when he's inside the the house and the, the quick little flashback is we see like just this this woman standing behind him and it's notable yeah. that the woman that we see and then later on in his apartment we see this woman like holding uh presumably like a baby it's yeah. hard to tell mm -hmm. but it looks like she's holding a baby uh, mm -hmm. And she's coming towards him, and he's freaking out, which is the one main big scare of the episode. Uh, mm -hmm. But this is the thing: because of the ending with the real horrific thing, is that the episode still feels like it has lots of dark horror in it. It's just not ghostly horror necessarily. Yeah, but oh, totally. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's kind of haunting. This is something that's been from the movies: is that you know, once you've been in the house, it attaches just itself to you. But mm -hmm. notably, this is not your classic uh, Kayako sort of style grudge yeah. you know ghost this is not that visual this is just she, i mean obviously she's shot in shadow and she's kind of creepy looking but it's not that character it's not kayako with the hair and the yeah. ah, crawling and, yeah ah, that noise you know mm -hmm. so i wonder maybe that'll be the thing is that by the end of the the, the six episodes it will sometime mm -hmm. somehow turn into kayako or uh that's it. I've, uh, never, I've never seen Joe on the Curse, though. Maybe Joe on the Curse doesn't have Kaiko in it. Maybe this is setting up a true. completely separate thing that I'm just not familiar with. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, totally possible. Um, yeah, I was kind of, uh, you know, keeping my eye or my ear out for, you know, like seeing if any of these characters, uh, you know, was named Kaiko uh, or something. And yeah, I don't think, um, it, you know, if she is going to show up, I don't think we've at least uh, seen her yet. But. Uh, yeah, I was kind of curious at, at first if that was, uh, you know, if we were going to see something like that, like her origin story or what she was like before she visited the house. The fact is, though, is that so many of those original movies are about revealing what happened to her that it, it feels kind of redundant to do her story. That's true, yeah. So, <laughs> I, I don't know, like, I, I wonder if we get some sort of transition thing or something mm -hmm. that hints towards her, but... Uh, even if it doesn't, like, I don't mind it not linking up to the movies at all, though. If this is just, oh, no, totally. you know, a story of some other ghost that comes from there that maybe develops over the six episodes and, you know, we yeah. get, you know, whatever idea. Um, because what, what if true. this ghost turns out to be the teenage girl? Let's say this teenage girl's plot line's, like, you know, set a year or two before, you know, mm -hmm. in, like, 1986 or something like that. And this is actually that girl with longer hair and she, the baby she's holding is maybe the baby, she, maybe she gets pregnant from this, this rape and, like, this mm -hmm. is the... You know, maybe this is the dark past that is now lingering there that's, you know, that, that was kind of my first instinct, but I could be completely wrong. I mean, it's only one episode then. There's not a lot to go on yet. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, True. Yeah. So, I it's safe to say we'll be back with episode two at some point, uh, and True. we mm -hmm. will uh, we'll talk about that. And it's also only six episodes, so it shouldn't take us too long, even if we only go one per week. Uh, it shouldn't mm -hmm. take us that long to uh, get through it. So, 
Uh, yeah, so this is a Netflix original. If you have Netflix, you have access to it. Uh, it may default you to the English dubbed version. Just make sure you click on the, the options to change it to the original Japanese with the input on the subtitles. Uh, mm-hmm. Unless you like dubs, which, you know, I mean, you do you, but <laughs> not for me. Uh, so, yeah, that is episode one of Joe on Origins. Let us know what you thought in the comments. Like if you can. Uh, liking is really important on YouTube. It lets the YouTube algorithm know that uh, we're worth recommending out to other people, so please do so. Uh, get us on patreon.com slash TV for uh, your, you know, your, your financial support. You can give us a dollar per month and get some bonuses for your trouble. Uh, include us a bonus episode of Screams After Midnight, uh, a movie review, so mm-hmm. I go have a look. Uh, and, you know, if it wasn't clear before, yeah, check out Screams After Midnight, uh, the main movie podcast for me and Tim review movies every week. Uh, that's good fun and uh, you can go find that and get us on twitter as well at screams midnight for uh, updates and tim tweeting and saying things about the boy <laughs> uh so that is us so thank you once again for watching or listening we always appreciate it keep watching scary tv guys and we will see you next time <laughs>